I, I understand in this world, because of the type of player and type of person I am, all eyes are on me. So why would I do something to jeopardize myself? I don't make, I don't do bad things, and I'm, I have no intention to hurt somebody. If I want to hurt him, I'm going to hit his quarterback, as I did throughout that game. It's the quarterback's worst nightmare. I'm telling you, Dominican Sue, when he gets to the quarterback, he wants to wreak havoc. Yes. Everyone's reputation is skewed. You can't know any particular person until you've been in their shoes. Nadama Kung Su to the Orange County Register in 2018. Nadama Kung Su is one of the most explosive and powerful defensive linemen in the NFL, the highest rated defensive tackle for several years, a first round pick who is a decorated collegiate player, and now in his 11th year as a pro as he is a constant menace on the field. However, there is one characteristic that he is very well known for, a trait that has unfortunately followed him no matter what huddle he breaks from. This controversial, not afraid to kick you when you're down, five-time pro bowler describes himself as just a football player, engineer, entrepreneur, and investor. But his peers, and especially opposing MVP quarterbacks, call Nadama Su the dirtiest player in the NFL. What's going on guys, your boy Mike here, and today we're going to be covering the career of Nadamakung Su. Before we get to the content, please take a moment to sack that like button for the YouTube algorithm as Roger Goodell loves to copyright claim us, and since this video might get a little graphic because it is the dirtiest player in the NFL, it may get hit with a demonetization, which means YouTube won't recommend it to a larger audience, unless if a lot of you guys like the video. Now that we get all that out of the way, Break. Mike Check 1212, Nadama Kung Su grew up with five brothers and sisters. Born in Portland, Oregon to a school teacher originally from Jamaica and a father from Cameroon who had played professional soccer in Europe. Maybe it was from his father where Su learned to be creative with his feet, and maybe competing with his siblings is how Nadama Kung Su gathered his cheap shot inventory. Nadama Kung's name translates to House of Spears, in a language native to Cameroon, very fitting for a 6 foot 4, 313 pound behemoth of an individual whose primary responsibility is to take down the opposing quarterback by using his body as a weapon. Although technically you can't and spear tackle in the NFL that is illegal. At Grant High School, he was a star in three sports, football, basketball, and track, and on the gridiron, he played as both an offensive and defensive lineman. He earned all-conference honors in both positions and was an all-state honorable mention by his junior year. His senior season, he was named to the All-American team while also winning his league's Defensive Player of the Year. He attended the University of Nebraska, excelling academically where he earned a degree in construction management within the difficult engineering college while at the same time dominating on the football field in a Huskers uniform. Nadama Kung Su, while sacking quarterbacks 12 times his senior year, logged 85 tackles, 24 tackles for a loss, 24 quarterback hurries, 10 pass breakups, 3 blocked kicks, and an interception. He earned his first team all Big 12 honors and was named Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. On a national level, he was the AP College Football Player of the Year and the first defensive player in history to win that award while also winning the Bronco Nagorski Trophy for the top defensive player in the nation, the Chuck Bidnarik Award, the Lombardi Award, and the Outland Trophy, and finished fourth in the Heisman Trophy race as a defensive tackle. During the draft evaluation process, Mel Kuyper, which we have a video documenting Mel Kuyper's draft takes if you'd be interested in that, Mel Kuyper described Nadama Kung Su as maybe the most dominating defensive tackle that I've seen in 32 years. And for the first time in Mel Kuyper's life, he was right, as the Detroit Lions, with the second overall pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, selected Nadama Kung Su, who would start his reign of terror in the NFL for more than a decade and counting. 
As a rookie, Nadama Kungsu would take down quarterbacks 10 times, force a fumble, and return another fumble for a touchdown. He was named a Pro Bowler and a first team All Pro as a rookie. However, in that same standout rookie season, it didn't take long before he used his wits and intelligence on the field to make some plays that were considered dirty and even villainous. You see, in a preseason game in 2019, yes, you heard that right, this was during the preseason, Nadama Kungsu grabbed Cleveland quarterback Jake DeLome's face mask and slammed his head into the ground WWE style. When asked about the play, Sue played ignorant in the fact that DeLome had released the ball and Sue said, I was just going after the ball. I had no clue that he had gotten rid of it. The rookie mistake costed his team a 15 yard penalty and Sue would get fined $7,500 as this was his first NFL infraction. However, the entire NFL would soon learn that dirty plays from Nadama Kung Sue would be more frequent and uglier and the fine money from the D lineman would add up faster than a slot machine with three cherries in a row. In December of his rookie year, Nadama Kungsu started to resemble a UFC fighter more than a defensive lineman when he hit Bears quarterback Jay Cutler on the back of the head with a forearm, or maybe it was just a straight punch. You guys could let me know in the comment section. Whatever it was, it was unnecessary roughness, resulting in a penalty and a fine of $15,000. Cutler probably needed a cigarette after that game to numb the hurt. But throughout the years, the Grizzly quarterback gained respect for Nadama Kung Su, who had been adamant that he hates quarterbacks. In 2017, Su said of Cutler, who he had his first NFL sack against, I definitely have the ultimate respect for him. I don't like any quarterbacks, but he was one guy that I definitely had a respect for because he took hits and never cried, never complained, and just got up and went and played the next play. Then, in the preseason of 2011, when players are expected to play in the most gentlemanly way because, once again, it's the preseason, this game doesn't really count, Nadama Kung Su again showed no mercy and took Cincinnati Bengals quarterback Andy Dalton to the ground via his head, causing Andy Dalton to lose his helmet in the process. Thus, the defensive player was fined $20,000 for the unfriendly welcome to the NFL, for Andy Dalton. On Thanksgiving Day in 2011, Nadama Kung Su received a suspension for driving Evan Dietrich Smith's head into the ground and then stomping on Smith. As a result of his prison yard-like play, the referee sent Su home to eat turkey early, as he was immediately disqualified after the unsportsmanlike play. At this point, Sue had already been penalized for many on-the-field incidents and had accumulated more than $40,000 in fines and wasn't even yet through his first two NFL seasons. Now, this would not be his last run-in with a Green Bay Packers player, as perhaps one of the most famous to put on a Green Bay Packers jersey would have some harsh words for Sue later on. Of the incident that cost the Lions $50,000 too, as the team had accumulated over 100 grand in fines in that season, the Lions coach Jim Schwartz said this on the radio about Nadama Kung Su. The league has decided to suspend him two games. That's something we have to deal with, we have to live with, and we have to find a way to get past it. We'll defend our players for everything they do from snap to whistle. And we want to be known as a tough physical team that plays as hard as they possibly can. But anything that happens after the whistle, we need to be held accountable for it, and we need to move on. However, in this one instance, it may have actually been the Packers player that started the childish games. A month after the incident, the story came out that the Green Bay Packers defensive line coach, James Campen, had instructed Smith to untie Nadama Kung Su's shoes at every single opportunity. On the video of the incident, you can see Sue motioning at his feet after his ejection. Before the rivals met for the second time in 2011, Smith said that Sue called to apologize. Via the Associated Press, Smith said of Sue, he's cool, he apologized, and there's no hard feelings, and that's pretty much it. I think we've all moved past it. It's a big learning experience for everybody. I think everyone in the league can take note of everything that happened, and I think every player is going to take a step forward to move past that kind of stuff.
Shortly after the Thanksgiving stomp, a NFL player and one of Sue's former college teammates voiced his own opinion of Ndamukong's actions. Jets guard Matt Slauson, who told Bart Hubbock of the New York Post that the NFL should suspend Sue because fines haven't curtailed his on-field misbehavior, and Slauson even went out to say that he's out of control. Somebody needs to get him under control because he's clearly trying to hurt people. It's one thing to be an incredibly physical player and a tenacious player, but it's another thing to set out to end that guy's career. What is surprising is that Sue didn't need to play dirty. He was one of the best in his position from very early on in his career. Sue was so strong that he would typically be able to push offensive linemen into opposing quarterbacks. His hands are strong enough to win one-on-one -on -one matchups against run blockers without any dirty moves needed. He was able to handle double teams and he can work his double team to a stalemate, allowing the linebacker to attack the line of scrimmage or fill the gaps. He was named to Pro Bowl after Pro Bowl and all pro teams. Yet with all this talent before and after the whistle, Sue still continued to commit many on the field crimes. And we're just at 2011, which by the way, in 2011, his peers in the sporting news poll voted him the dirtiest player in the NFL. Now in a 2012 game, the Dominican Sue would go below the belt against Houston Texans quarterback, Matt Shaw. On the play, Sue was falling to the ground after attempting to sack Matt Schaub. Schaub would let go of the ball. Then, while Sue was on the ground, he extended his foot to land directly in Schaub's groin, conveniently kicking him where no man should ever kick another man. Schaub told 610 Sports of Houston when asked if he would like a player like Sue on his team that you don't want a player like that. The stuff he stands for and the type of player he is, that's not Houston Texans worthy. That's not what we're about as a football team. As individuals, collectively as a group, we're not that type of person. In other news, the Houston Astros in 2017 had invited Sue to try out as a designated hitter, I'm just kidding, against the Minnesota Vikings in the 2013 season opener, Sue negated a DeAndre Levy pick six when Ndamukong illegally blocked center John Sullivan via a ferocious low hit. The NFL, which were renovating their Park Avenue offices thanks to Sue's fine money, sent a $100,000 invoice, a record fine to sue for his latest dirty move. There was probably more than one instance in his short NFL career that Browns quarterback Brandon Whedon wished that he had stuck to professional baseball. And week six of the 2013 NFL season was probably one of those times. First, Nadama Kungsu hit him hard. I mean, like, really, really hard. But the action did not result in a penalty in the game, rather a $31,500 fine from the league. Then, later in the third quarter, Whedon was scrambling when Sue tossed him to the ground like a rag doll. Then Nadama Kungsu got to an MVP that isn't afraid to call him out. In the last game of the NFL season, after being injured early, Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers valiantly returned to the game, hobbling on an injured ankle to attempt to clinch the NFC North for Green Bay. During the fourth quarter of that 30-20 Packers win over the Lions, while Aaron Rodgers was lying on the ground, Ndamukong Su backed up and stepped on Aaron Rodgers' ankle, and then backed up again and stepped on Aaron Rodgers' leg a second time. Now, as a result, Sue would get suspended one game, which would mean he would miss a crucial game, the Lions' wildcard playoff matchup. However, the ban was overturned after an arbitration hearing. Perhaps it was because the league valued money more than getting a menace off the field, and they needed to add more mahogany desks to their office, thus in lieu of a suspension, Sue received a $70,000 fine. Aaron Rodgers had this to say about the incident. The only thing I can say is if you step on something in your everyday life, or if you step on somebody on the field, the first reaction seems to be looking back and maybe apologizing with your hands or maybe pulling your foot back right away. And I'm just not sure that's what happened on Sunday. Earlier that season, Sue got into it with New England Patriots running back LeGarrette Blunt in a 2014 loss at New England. Sue and Blunt exchanged heated words while coming off of the field after the Lions' loss. Then years later in 2017, when Blunt was still with the Patriots and Sue now with the Dolphins, the two would meet again. This time it got pretty physical, with Sue starting to scrap via a shove and Blunt responding by twisting Sue's face mask until the helmet came off of his head. Sue actually pushed a referee during the incident as well, but was not penalized for that. When Laguerre Blunt was asked, 
years after the incident by Carlos Monares in the Detroit Free Press in 2018. If he, Blunt, thought that Nadam Kungsu was still a dirty player, Blunt responded with, I do. Blunt, however, didn't give examples on why he thinks Sue plays dirty. He continues saying that it doesn't really matter now. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what crosses the line. You see guys do it all the time, you know what I'm saying? So I would just rather not speak on that. 2014 would be Nadama Kungsu's final season with the Detroit Lions, as before the 2015 season, he would sign a huge six-year, $114 million contract with the Miami Dolphins. Perhaps the sunshine and ocean breeze of South Florida led Sue to become more zen-like as his only issue in that 2015 season came in a September game against Washington. In the event that wasn't worthy of a fine, according to the league, Nadama Kungsu kicked, or more like need, running back Alfred Morris's helmet after after a play, but the league, now finished with their office renovations, deemed that it wasn't a kick and didn't discipline Nadama Kung Su. Su settled down that season and also was living up to his big contract, recording 61 tackles and 6 sacks in his first season with the Miami Dolphins. Then in his second season in South Beach, in 2016 he improved by making 72 tackles while sacking quarterbacks 5 times. Another player who's known for being crude and a dirty player himself and also played college ball at Nebraska had this to say about Sue in 2015. My train of thought is there's only one way to play the game, and that's with an edge in attitude, Richie Incognito would say. I love the way Nadama Kung Su plays, and I have a ton of respect for him. We went to the same school, and he's had a lot of success. I think we're both cut from the same cloth. We're both kind of an old school mentality. Hard-nosed guys who are going out there and imposing our will on people. Not a lot of people are ready for it. They label us as dirty, and I just think people can't handle our intensity. In 2017, Nadama Kung Su was dinged twice in a week eight matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. Su must have forgotten about his breathing exercises or missed a crucial meditation session at the beach as it looked like he may have attempted to choke quarterback Ryan Mallett out while engaging in a shoving match with him. Su said that the choke was a self-defense move as he said the 6'6", 245-pound Mallett was looking to start a fight. He came at me, Sue said to the Palm Beach Post, tried to attack me, and I'm protecting myself. Do I regret that? No. I'm never going to regret protecting myself. Afterwards, the Miami Dolphins would release Nadama Kung Su due to salary cap issues, but the LA Rams would sign him to a one-year $14 million deal for the 2018 season, which means Aaron Donald and Nadama Kung Su were on the same defensive line. Yes. During that season, he only received one big fine for a horse collar tackle against the Detroit Lions, and he was fined just over $20,000. Sue finally made it to the Super Bowl and helped LA get to the big game with his one and a half sacks versus the New Orleans Saints in the NFC Championship game. Sue would then sign with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the 2019 season and was one of the most consistent members of a revitalized strong defensive unit of pass rushers that aged like fine wine, including himself, Jason Pierre-Paul, and the emerging Shaq Barrett. In 2019, he only received five flags and no fines for egregious actions. Then, in Tampa Bay's Super Bowl winning season of 2020, he logged six sacks, which was the most he has ever had since 2015. In present day, even players like Aaron Rodgers consider him not to be the most pleasant to face on the field. In 2020, AJ Hawk on the McAfee and Hawk show asked Aaron Rodgers if he had beef with Nadama Kung Su and if it was similar to the Warren Sapp and Brett Favre rivalry. Aaron Rodgers asked about Sue playing in quote-unquote his own way, and how it led to some interesting conversations. McAfee asked specifically about the in-game conversations with Rodgers and Sue, and Rodgers recalled that faithful 2014 game where he faced Nadama Kung Su. He said at the two-minute warning was the all-time trash talk, maybe the scariest he has ever faced. Rodgers recalled a story discussing the on-field conversation where Sue said, don't be scared, and Rodgers responded with, you and I need to have a conversation. However, Rodgers wasn't sure if it was lost in translation and the two didn't end up meeting after the game. Not that Rodgers would ever fight Sue, as although they are both around the same age, Jeopardy host Rodgers is intelligent enough to know that wouldn't go over well. Rodgers did say this about Sue, saying that on the field, I can't say I'm a huge fan. 
perhaps they can make their amends once they both receive their gold jackets and spend a weekend in early August in Canton. However you categorize Sue as a bad guy or not, no one can argue against his consistency, especially as of late. He is a true Iron Man when it comes to his NFL career, as he has missed only two games in his entire career, both due to the 2011 suspension. As for his pocketbook, it has been hit hard in his career. He has been fined over $660,000 with more than $400,000 of those fines coming in his first four seasons in the NFL, all while with the Detroit Lions. So maybe the maturation of Sue has resulted in him being more mindful of his sideshow, or as he recently was married in 2020, perhaps his settling down off the field is a positive cause and effect of him settling down on the field. As for 2021, Sue is recently a father to twin boys, which will mellow even the toughest guys out. Sue returns to Tampa Bay this season, and most predict the Bucks to make a run at the Lombardi once again. The well-spoken veteran recently sat down for media availability and talked about how he is focused on the task at hand, and that although he is a veteran, he still has to work to earn his spot. It's the truth. Sue may be in the final years of his career, but will still fight to remain a starter, terrorizing opposing quarterbacks. He will have a challenge leading up to the 2021 NFL season, as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did spend a first-round pick on a pass rusher by the name of Joe Tryon. Sue's advice for him? Football is football. Let's just hope that Nadama Kung Su can be a good influence as the NFL doesn't need any more dirty players. Speaking of dirty players, if you made it to the end of this video, I wanted to give you an opportunity to comment in the comment section down below. What dirty players should we cover next on this channel? If you didn't catch our video on Vontez Burfik, make sure you check it out in the end screen. And aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.